Hello, this is video two of our social distancing simulation sample project for our final project here. And just to remind us where we were, we have these people, and the people can be in different states of susceptible, infected, or recovered, and they move around the screen in certain positions and in certain directions. So what we've built so far are the elements of the state, the susceptible, infected, and recovered state. We built a heading to know where they're going, what direction they're heading in, and we built a position class to know exactly where they are on the screen. So we're going to build next the person and add a bit more to position so that we can move and then we'll build the whole simulation of everybody moving all at once and that'll be what we cover in this video. So let's get back here. Like I said, we have the state, we have the position, and we have the heading. So now it's time to start making a person, person class. So things we need in a person class. Let's see if we can get those up here. We need our data fields. We need to have a private state. We need to have a private position. Look. We need to have a private heading. Heading. Okay. We're going to want to draw them on the screen, and so we want to have a private circle. And let's go ahead and load that up. And one more thing we need, because we are going to be putting them on a GUI, and it's going to be nice to know where they are and the size of how big things are to help put things together here, we're going to have private pane. And this is going to be our space of our world where people are going to be wandering around. Okay, time for a constructor. Public person. If you give me a state and the world, <clears throat> then I'll be able to make everything else. So let's see how we could do that. This.state equals state. We definitely need to record that. This.heading. We need it to be a random heading. We saw how to do that last time. We're going to make a new heading here. And a random heading will pick a direction and then figure out the delta x and delta y from there. OK, we'd like to do something similar with the position. This dot location equals a new position. But the only way we have to make a position right now is to give it an x and a y. Let's put that onto the position itself. If we give it a world, and when we tell it how big things are, let's say things are going to be 5, well, it doesn't like it right now. Let's go write a new method inside position. OK, <clears throat> new constructor, public position. If you give me the world and you give me the radius, of how big that circle is going to be that we draw on the screen, then we'll be able to figure out a random position. So let's see if we can go do that. <clears throat> now, we're going to use the property of calling this other constructor up here. If we can figure out an x and a y, then what we can say down here is this. Go call the basic constructor with two doubles inside it. OK, how could we do that? Math.random again times <clears throat> world dot, oh, we need to know what a pane is, and we can't have any other errors at the point. Let's go back to that. Okay, import the class, and this math dot random times world dot get width. That's going to give us a nice x value. And math.random times world.get 
height is going to give us a nice y value. <clears throat> okay, but the thing is, because we know these circles have a radius, we know how big they are, we don't want them overlapping the edge of the screen, falling off. We would like to make sure they're within the bounds, not just their center point, but their whole span of the circle. So <clears throat> we have to do a little bit more work here to say we shouldn't be picking from all of the width. We have to subtract off the size of the circle. So two, my two times the radius, one for each side of the width, shrinking it down a little bit. And then we need to make sure it doesn't go from zero. It has to say radius plus that number that we get here. Same thing for the y. Radius plus math at random times world dot get height. Well, we don't want things to fall off, so radius here. Okay, so this is a way that we can make a random position. <clears throat> if we go back to our person, we can say, ah, our location is a new position. I give you the world. I tell you what my radius is. I'm gonna be size five right now. And then I have a new spot that I am in the world. Okay, we need a circle now. We are going to say the circle equals a new circle. How big is it? Well, five. We're like, wait a second, this is turning into a magic number. I should make it a variable up here. This is something I want that slider to control. So I'm going to say public static int radius. That's just for right now equals five. And I can replace this with the word radius, radius there. Okay, what is going to be my color of the circle? Let's talk to my state, and we wrote a really cool method called getColor. Yes, perfect. So I've made my circle. It has a nice fill color. I want to set the stroke color to color.black. Oh, I need to tell it what color it is. Java FX always. Okay, cool. The world needs to have the circles to draw. World dot get children dot add this circle. Great. Now when we have a pane in the world, we can put these people on it. We can just create them. And if we give it a state and a world, then we can have a person. Good. Some things we want to do with that person. We want to be able to get their state. So public state get state. That's a good method to have. And public uh, set state. Let's go ahead and do that one. But we need to do a bit more than just changing our state. We've got to go change our circle to state.getColor. Good. OK. So now we're all set to have a person having a state. We can change their state as the state of the world changes. If they bump into somebody or they get better, we can access that through our simulation. What else do these people do? They're moving. So let's make a move method. It's your turn to move. How do you move? Well, the way we wrote position and heading make it really convenient. It would be nice to not have to put all of our code of movement here. Let's just let that be up to the position. I'm going to say, hey, location, you are going to move according to the heading that you have. So that requires us to go out to our position and start to write a move method. Public void move. It brings in a heading. Heading. So how does a point move when it's given a heading? Headings have a delta x and delta y. We have an x and y. And so the simplest thing we can do is say x plus equals heading dot get 
dx and y plus equals heading dot get dy. There we go. We will have the move. And I think that's good for right now. We'll watch what happens in the world and then come back and change it later. But that gets us started on thinking about moving. This, this will have to get fixed. I know you're probably saying, wait, there's, there's things you have to consider to make them stay in the world. And, and we'll bring that up later. Okay, so now last thing we want our person to be able to do is to draw itself on the screen. And we've seen this before. We need to talk to our circle, set our radius equal to the radius. Set our translate x to be our locations get x and set translate y to be our locations get y. Okay, so now our people can move and our people can be drawn on the screen. Great. One last class to fill out our simulation. It's going to be our simulation class. Okay, so the important thing that the simulation keeps track of is an array list of person, and we're going to call it people. Let's make a constructor simulation. If you give me a pane uh, for the world, and you tell me how many people should be here and pop size, then I should be able to construct everything I need. Okay, let's see if we can do that. So, people equals new array list full of person objects. And somebody told us how many we need. Four int i equals zero, i less than pop size. Let's make that many people. So people add a new person. Now what kind of things does it need to make a person? Our constructor for a person took a state and a world. So, the way we were starting it off, we had all of these people were made uh, susceptible. So, state susceptible. And we want to also give them the world so they can construct their positions. Cool. We also started ourselves off with one new person we get the state infected. They also live in the world. Okay, this is our constructor for the simulation. <clears throat> we know how many people there are, and we make that many people, and then one more person comes in there who is infected. Cool. Public. Let's have an array list. Somebody else might want to see these. Here are the people currently in our simulation. And let's write two more methods. Public void move. This is a for loop for all the people. Person p in the people. I want to call p dot move. And what does it need to move? Nothing. Great. Okay. Public void draw. Let's draw all the people again for person p in the people p dot draw great okay so this will give us a simulation and as long as we know what the world is everything should be added to the world and then we can ask it to move and draw as we need to <laughs> okay so that covers the basic setup, like I said, we're going to come back and fix up the movement, but it gives us enough, enough to start going to the JavaFX part in the next video. So I'll pick it up there.